Travis, during the show, police say that he kept encouraging people to come down from their seats and pack in there. Uh, so as soon as the show was over, he was arrested for inciting a riot, uh, endangering the welfare of a minor, and disorderly conduct. And, and remember, we saw this was on the heels of what, last week or two weeks ago, he was in New York City telling people, jump off a balcony. Hey, hey, get your fucking nerdy ass off the stage, bro. Go. Now, you off. Yes, I don't know you, bro. Go, go, go. Nobody on stage, bro. I felt like he tried to violate me, so. I don't want to pay that. Go to the law. Get off my stage, bro. You tried to take my shoe? You want to be a thief? Come up. Come up. Come up. I feel like we was in a concert in hell. I mean, this year was just, something was different. It was just, the energy was crazy. I mean, I can't even begin to put it into words for you guys, but. I could go into like my personal opinion on like what happened. Like it felt demonic and satanic as f And like, I, I'm wearing a cross right now, but like I'm not even religious, like 0% like whatsoever. It just felt so weird. This time after World, it was totally different. It was just like, like a concert from hell. The vivid looks of terror on so many faces. It like really spooked me tonight. Like that was like some demonic shit. Like. But when I was like waiting for Travis and watching Travis, it just felt like really like, like eerie, like doomful, like just odd. And it's weird because while I was there, I literally, me and my boyfriend literally used the words demonic, satanic, eerie, like while we were there without knowing what the f was happening. And there is the flaming phoenix over the red portal to what looks like hell. And that stunned my opinion. This is, the, this is what the fans are saying, that it felt like they were in hell. And just look at it, flames everywhere, dark imagery, and dark eerie sounds. People who aren't even Christian were saying that this seemed satanic and demonic. This entire festival it just looked like people worshiping an idol in hell i mean the flames were going the people's arms were in the air as you can tell travis scott has a bit of an ego problem he treats people pretty badly uh, the way he treats people on stage and kicking off people who are just trying to do their job as a cameraman and he gets arrested for causing chaos and anarchy and riots as you can see, he's no stranger to dark and satanic themes as he's throwing up the horns and sitting here with Marilyn Manson, who was actually at one of the Astro Worlds before. And look at this dark imagery. I mean, the, the black wings of what appears to be a fallen angel. He's wearing all black, red background. This is all satanic imagery, smoking, head down, in a cage, looking like a demon. This is Travis Scott's image dark, demonic, satanic, and then he had this festival where everybody went thinking that they were going to have a good time, and actually it turned into a complete tragedy. Bill Spencer, live near NRG Park, where a memorial continues to grow tonight. And Bill, you spoke to the father of one of those fans who tried to stop the event. How are they coping with this tragedy tonight? The festival is titled after this album, Astro World, and as you can see, there's two children in the foreground. I'm not sure why there's children on the cover of an album with a parental advisory, but as you can see, there's parents walking in the background into the mouth of Travis Scott with a glowing orange glow and smoke coming out of it like a furnace. And I can't help but to compare it to the Moloch statue in the movie Metropolis, where they're walking people into the fiery furnace of the mouth of this god. And this god is a Canaanite deity associated in biblical sources with the practice of child sacrifice, which might explain why there's children on the front of the cover there. You shall not give any of your children to devote them by fire to Moloch and so profane the name of your god, Leviticus 18.21. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the sons of Hinnom that no one might burn his son or his daughters in an offering to Moloch, 2 Kings 23.10. Notice the comparison. We see that this statue has a glowing, flaming mouth with smoke coming out of it. And who's going in? The children. And the parents are leading the children in, just like it describes in the Bible. 
It's hard for me to believe that this is just some coincidence, especially with his track record of all the evil and demonic themes. As you can see here from an ancient drawing of Moloch, it's just, it's just the same. You're feeding your children to the flaming mouth of Moloch. Another eerie thing about the festival was the phrase that kept being shown on the flyers and on the background itself that said, see you on the other side. Seeing someone on the other side, that's what you tell somebody when they're dying or they're dead and you, you're not going to see them in this life. See you on the other side. And here you can see a picture of people walking through a doorway and changing on the other side. Now the mainstream media came out and said that there was all kinds of baseless conspiracy theories coming out about the deaths that happened at this festival, saying that they're a, a satanic ritual sacrifice, and they're saying that there was no grounds for this at all, and it was just a, a crazy conspiracy theory. But if you get a bird's eye view of the festival itself, he was performing on an inverted cross that was entering in through the portal of a glowing red hellish place in this mountain. Sometimes this mountain would be projected with eyeballs all over it and aliens and all these different dark demonic themes. So it's not so far-fetched that people would associate this festival with being satanic and demonic. Actually, the fans themselves were saying when they went there, it felt just so dark and eerie and demonic. Now, birds of a feather flock together, right? Travis's girlfriend, they don't really call themselves girlfriend and boyfriend, but his significant other is none other than Kylie Jenner. They have a child together. She's pregnant right now. And Kylie Jenner was mentioned in Teen Vogue about a photo shoot she recently did. It says, Kylie Jenner posed naked and covered in blood to announce her new Halloween collection. And here is a censored version of one of those pictures that was released on her Instagram. The other ones are a lot more explicit and I'm not even gonna show those. So the question being asked is, Travis Scott innocent in all this? Did he have anything to do with these deaths that happened at the show? The honest truth is, I don't know. I cannot blame a person on stage for the deaths that happen in a festival situation. I've been a performer, I've performed at many shows, I've been to a lot of shows where I literally was so squished that I couldn't move my arms and my feet were lifting off the ground and I was moving in a sea, a wave of people. And I literally had to lean my head back just to try and breathe air that was up there and it felt like you're not getting any air because literally there's steam coming off the audience and you just, you, you can't not get, you cannot catch your breath. And so, you know, I, I don't place a blame on the artist as saying that he somehow kill these people. Now, do I think he's innocent? I don't necessarily think he's innocent. I think that he had plenty of opportunities to stop the show, to calm the people down, and instead he was saying when he heard, when he was told that there are people passing out, there's even rumor of people being dead out there, he said, no, 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 we're not going to stop the show. I want to feel the ground shake. He said, let's rage. Do you believe the performer, Travis Scott, should have called an end to the concert once he saw what was taking place in front of the stage? Look, absolutely. Look, we all have a responsibility. Said people were screaming for the concert to stop. I mean, I'm around people and they're yelling, stop the show, chant. People were chanting, help, stop the show. And that's when I was like, dude. Stop the show! 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 Just a little bit of a It's an ambulance in the crowd. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the fuck is 
né? É, ora, 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 ora. Two hands to the sky. Two hands to the sky. Two hands up, yeah, two hands up. Y'all know what y'all came to do, Chase me, let's go. Whoa. I'm gonna make this fucking ground shake, God. Whoa. Whoa. Here we go. Whoa. Here we go. Whoa. Here we go. Here we go. Five, seven, four. four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What I just said. So not only did he not stop the show, but he gave no hesitation to just keeping the rage going. And so he's known for inciting riots, inciting rage, inciting bad behavior like jumping the fence, jumping off of balconies, and, and even starting fights with people. Now Billboard just released an article that says, an injured concert goer claims that the festival disaster was the result of a motivation for profit at the expense of concert goers' health and safety and the encouragement of violence. Now that's what somebody said that was at the concert. They said he was encouraging violence, that he didn't even try to stop this thing. He didn't try to slow down. He didn't try to calm down the crowd. He didn't play calming music. He just kept it going and kept it going. And I've seen the videos. I've seen a lot of videos where he's up on a platform looking, making eye contact with people who are passed out. Maybe he just thought they were passed out. And I'm saddened when I watch these videos and all I can think about is where do you want to be when you're taking your last breath? That last dying breath. I can't imagine what those people are going through as they're laying on the ground surrounded by people just jumping up and down, raising their hands to an American idol, listening to these demonic, satanic beats. And that's, their la that's the last thing they see as they go out. And I want to ask you, where would you want to be in that situation? I mean, I don't even want to think about that situation. But for one, these concerts, are you're, you're just putting yourself at risk. I've been to them many, many times, and, and they were fun and all that. But is it really worth the risk? Is that where we want to be when Christ returns or when we're taking our last breath? Do we want to be looking at this as we take our last breath? You know, I, I can't say I've ever heard of somebody losing their life, becoming paralyzed, or being in a coma because they went to go hear the Word of God at, at a revival. That's where I'd want to be if I was surrounded by a whole lot of people and if I knew that my time was short. I want to read some verses that the Bible has to say about how we're all like sheep and we're all looking for a shepherd to follow. And if we choose the wrong shepherd, we're going to be led to death and destruction. We're going to be led to a path to hell. And Satan, all he cares about is death and destruction. He comes to seek and to destroy. Isaiah 53, 6 says, All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We've all gone astray. We're all sheep. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53, 7, the next verse says, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. Christ took on all the sin of the world, all the sin that you've ever committed, all the sin that I've ever committed, and he put it on himself. And he, like a lamb, laid down his life so that we could have eternal life if all we will do is receive it. All we have to do is receive that gift of eternal life. And He wants us to have life, and He wants us to have life more abundantly. Jeremiah 23, 1 says, Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. There are other shepherds out there who are leading the flock astray, leading them to death and destruction. We have to take this seriously. We're in a spiritual war here. There's, there's forces of evil and good who are trying to get our attention, who are trying to lead us in a certain direction. And, and some of us are just out here oblivious, acting like this life is just meaningless, fun, and just follow the lust of your flesh. And we're, we're in for a big awakening. 
because this spiritual war is real. And whether Travis was, you know, deliberately trying to, to hurt people or harm people, I don't know. I can't say that for sure. But I can tell you that the forces he's messing with, these demonic, satanic forces, they want to harm. They want to kill and destroy. And if he opens himself up to those forces and be, begins to be possessed by those forces and they take over, they're not going to stop. When people say there's people dying out there, you can guarantee the demons are going to say, keep the party going. Matthew 9:36 says, But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Jesus wants to be our shepherd. He wants to lead us to life, but he cannot force himself upon us. He will not force himself upon us. He's knocking on the door of our hearts. He's not bashing in doors. He's not forcing people to do anything, but he wants us to have life more than we want it ourselves. The good news is it's not too late. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past, it can all be forgiven. If you just lay it down at Christ's feet and you repent and you tell God, I want to serve you. I want to change my ways and live for you. He will give you eternal life. The greatest gift anyone could ever give. You can't buy life. You cannot buy, you cannot extend your life with all the money in the world. The Bible says, what profits a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? It's not too late. If you want to choose today to choose God and lay down the wickedness of this world and turn from this world and be set apart, you can do that right now and it's not too late. 1 Peter 2.25 says, For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. See, it's not too late. Like the prodigal son, even if you've gone astray, you can come back and he will accept you. Luke 12, 32 says, Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The Father wants to give you the kingdom more than you can even imagine. It's like your love for your child or your love for your spouse. It's unmatchable. You would lay down your life for your spouse or your child, and Christ did that for you. And he says it's not too late. And even if you've gone astray, you can come back and you'll be forgiven and accepted and given the eternal life in his kingdom. John chapter 10 verses 11 through 15 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But the hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. He laid down his life for you. He cares about you more than anyone, more than anyone on this earth. He cares about you and your life and he wants to he wants you to choose eternity with him john 10 10 says the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy i have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 says i call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that i have set before you life and death blessing and cursing therefore choose life that both you and your descendants may live now that is a promise that i can hold on to and that's what i want to accept i pray that you do the same and i pray that you just you stay away from these concerts just like that one guy that said he, he travis was his biggest idol and he made music influenced by travis and when he went to this concert he said god told him you should not be here. This is not something you should be a part of. And he said it felt demonic and satanic and I never want to go back and I felt like I was going to die there. And it's changed his whole life. God woke him up. God is waking people up by the masses right now. And right now you're either going to fall for the strong delusion of the world or you're going to hear the loud cry of Revelation saying, flee, 
get out of the world, get out of Babylon, and come to the city of God. If you were blessed by this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps get into the algorithm so that more people can see this content. You never know who might just, you know, be interested in this topic, stumble upon it, and they're hearing the gospel for the first time. Also, if you have family and friends that you want to share it with, go ahead and share it, and we'll see you guys next time.